right guys so carrying on from our last video what we're going to do now is we're actually going to integrate the delegates and protocols so whenever you tap this button it will toggle the icon and it will actually send back um, from the cell to the view controller that hey this item was selected Arsenal or this item was selected Aston Villa so let's do that now so the first thing we need to do is we need to actually create a delegate um in our table view cell so what i'm going to do i'm going to actually going to just write the code first and then after i finish writing the code i'll explain to you what they are and how they work so what we need to do is we need to go inside of our team table view cell and at the top here we're going to type protocol and team table view cell delegate and we're going to make it of type class and then we're going to create a new um, function here and we're just going to call it did tap playback so did so function so did tap playback for team of type team cool and then within our um within our table uh, view cell and the configure function we're going to create a new property here in the function and we'll call it delegate and then just above here we're going to create a new property so we're going to create a private week var delegate of type team table view cell delegate which is going to be optional and then we're going to basically pass in the delegate to be this type and then we're going to actually hook up the delegate within the cell to whatever is trying to access it. And then it's very important to use del self.delegate here so it knows that it's talking about this delegate property here and not this one. That's why we use self is to differentiate between the property within this class and the parameter name. And we're actually going to create another property here called team. So we're going to say team of type team, which is going to be a type optional as well. And we're going to set the item. We're going to set the team to the item. Cool. So let's just discuss this from the top and what's going on. So what is a delegate? What are you talking about, Tons? Just tell me. So basically, delegate is literally what it is it delegates a task from one object to another so when you're working with table view cells or objects in general um sometimes you need to send data between them and you don't know how you're going to do that even if it is possible so in order to do that you have to use a delegate um so you can see here we actually have a protocol and we have a table view cell delegate so what we're basically saying here is that this delegate handles any action from within this table view cell so any action within this table view cell if you subscribe to this delegate you will receive the output from this function so the best way to think about it is when you're working with controls programmatically always think about it such as input and output so if i give this control some input the input being these these parameters here i'm going to receive some output and the output in this case is the delegate so the reason why we have to basically mark it class as well is to prevent retain cycles. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail here about what a retain cycle is, but it basically just means that we want to stop memory leaks so our app runs efficiently and it doesn't start to take up too much memory on the device. And that's why we mark this property here with a week as well. So when the application is finished with this object, it will dispose of the delegate and it won't keep it in memory. So the next thing we need to do now is we need to actually use this delegate to provide that output I was talking about. So when someone taps on this button, we want to basically provide the output being the team that you've just selected, that you've selected to play back the song for. So in order to do that, we need to actually add an action to our button programmatically. And then we need to then call a delegate function to send back that team. So let's do that next. So what we're going to do here above here is with our playback button, we're actually going to add a target. 
So a target is literally how you add a button press, a press or an action to a control. So in our case here, we're gonna do it with when someone taps on the button, so touch up inside of the button. So we're gonna add the target to self. So we want the target to happen within this class. We want the selector to be did tap playback. So the selector is the function that's going to execute when you tap the button. And then we want the event to be touch up inside. So when someone touches up inside the button, it will trigger this function. Now it's complaining because we've actually not implemented this function. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna implement this function now. So we just scroll down to the bottom and um, before the last curly brace, we're gonna type at objective C and then funk and then did tap playback and then we'll go parentheses and then close it off so we have to use when you're working with selectors and um, you have to write this keyword before it at objective c and um, hopefully um apple removes that but it's just because of the um the type of this selector is a type so it's like an objective c function so you have to annotate it so in here when someone taps the button this is going to execute. So just to show you that, what we're going to do is we're going to put a print statement in here and we're just going to basically print out the team name. So we're going to put a message here saying the team that was selected is, and then we're just going to basically print out that item that, that um, sorry, so we're going to print out that property. So team dot name like so. So we're just going to run this. And then we're gonna press some buttons and see what we get. Ooh, so we've got an error somewhere. Oh, so yeah, so what we're gonna do is we need to actually implement delegate. So let's just set this up now before we run it. So delegate self. So now uh, we're just gonna do extension. And then we need to implement the default implementation. So fix it up. And this should now compile. I'm actually gonna come back to discuss this. I'm just setting up the base of it. So now this succeeded. So now when we hit the play button, you can see we get Arsenal. If we hit this play button, we get Aston Villa. If we get this play button, we get Brighton and so on and so forth. So if we explore this a bit deeper now, why did I have to do this. So this bit here is super crucial. So this bit where we say self is where we're basically linking this view controller to this table view cell. So whenever the delegate within this cell is executed, we will basically trigger it within this class here. So this is the link between the view controller and the table view cell. So if I was to call the function did tap playback when in here. So if I was to do delegate dot did tap did tap playback for, and then if I was to call this function here, because we've said that we want the delegate function to be linked to this view controller, it will actually execute this line here. So we can now access the object from that table view cell and do what we need to do with it. This is a very, very common pattern with iOS development. And it's something that's um, very um, important to know and understand. So I'd highly recommend you rewatch this video at least one or two, one to three times, maybe and just break it down and see how things work before um, just skipping ahead, because it's very important you understand this. You'll see this used in a lot of applications. So, in our case here, what we want to do is when someone taps that playback button, we want to basically get the team. We want to basically play the chant and we want to change the icon on the screen to say this is not um, playing. It's now changed to the paused icon. So let's do that now. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to unwrap the team. So we're going to say if let team is equal to team. Then what we're going to do is we're actually going to 
send that team back to the view controller. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to print in the view controller, the item. That was selected. So we're going to say team dot name. So now this will show you in practice how the view controller is linked to the table view cell now. So now if I hit the play button, let's open the console, you can see here that the team that we select gets printed into the console. So now we can access the data from the table view cell and we can do some sort of um, configuration or we can push to another view controller or we can save it to the database. So that's the cases where you want to use delegates. You want to use delegates whenever you have an object which isn't linked to another object and you need to basically pass some data through. You want to use delegates. So just to make this a bit more efficient, there's actually something that could go wrong here. So we're actually not cleaning it. We're not actually doing any cleaning up with our table view cells. So when you're working with table view cells, you actually want to clean them up when they go off screen. So with table views and um, when Aston Villa goes off the screen now, the, the application actually disposes of that cell. So now that it's gone off, gone off screen, we actually want to clean that state. So in order to clean that state, we want to use a lifecycle function here called prepare for reuse. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this at the top here. So prepare for reuse. I'm going to go call super.prepare for reuse. And then the first thing we want to do is we want to basically delete and just clear all the UI within the table view cell. So to do that, I'm just going to say self.contentView.subviews. And then for each subview, we want to remove that from the super view. So remove from super view. So this will clear using a high order. This is called, this is a high order function. Um, I will go into this in a later video, but for now, uh, just to briefly explain it, we're just going to basically get all the UI under in the cell and we're just going to delete it. And then what we're also going to do here is we're going to say self dot team is equal to nil. So we can clear the team as well. And just for good measure, we're also going to clean the delegate as well. So we're going to basically just dispose of everything. So the, when the cell comes back into the screen like so, it's in a brand new fresh state. So this is just some little cleanup that you can do on the cell. Okay. And then the next thing we need to do now is we actually need to change this icon when it's been tapped. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a new function in our view model. And in this function in our view model is going to basically allow us to toggle between um, the video being played, sorry, the chant being played or not. And we're actually going to use another high order function. So let's do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our view model and we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom and we're going to create a new function called toggle playback. So func toggle playback. And then in here, we're going to pass in the team. So toggle playback for team, team. Don't want to return anything. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to go into the teams array and for each um, item that we get in the array, we're actually going to check if the item dot ID is equal to the team dot ID. So if the item that was selected is equal to the current item in the array that we're looping through, so when we loop through this array, we're going to check to see, did you select? So is does this match the first one? Does this match the second one? Yes, it does. So we're now going to do some sort of computation. So because it matches, we're now going to basically toggle the playing status. So item dot is playing dot toggle. And we're going to say else, we're just going to say that the item isn't playing, isn't playing because it isn't because we didn't select it. So instantly we have a problem. So the first problem is, is that we have, the first problem that we have doing it like this is we can't change item. This is because we define team as a struct, it's basically saying that we can't actually change it. 
And to be honest with you, we shouldn't actually have team as a struct because I don't know if you remember the previous video, but I actually mentioned that structs are value types. So a struct being a value type means that whenever you change it, you need to basically create a brand new copy of it. Now, we don't want to be doing that because that's going to be hard to manage. Instead, we want to basically just change the reference of it in memory. So if we ever change the reference of it, it just basically means that we just change it once and it updates in memory in the life cycle that exists. So what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to go to teams. I'm actually going to change this from a struct to a class. And now what we need to do, because it's a class, we actually need to implement the initializer. As you can see, it has no initializers. So what we're going to do is we're going to do command on your keyboard, click on it, and then generate member wise initializer. And that generates an initializer for all the um, properties in this class. And then what we're going to do is rather than setting this to false, you can see here by default, it sets it to false for us. So we're just going to remove this. And now what we're going to do is we'll go back to our file and then we're going to build it and you can see now it succeeded so what's going to happen now is when we change the team that we pass in here it's actually going to update it in memory rather than create a brand new copy of it which is what we don't want so now what we're going to do is we're going to use this function and we're going to basically call it here so what we're going to do is when someone taps the playback button we're going to say uh, teams view model dot toggle playback for team and I'm gonna reload the table view so we can see the new icon that it will represent so because we change because we toggle the value for one of them it might change this to false or true and if it's true then we want to reload the table view so we can see the new icon pause for the true so I'm just gonna delete this and I'm gonna stop and then run it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this and you can see how it's changed to pause because Arsenal is now playing, which is true. And if we go back to our table view cell, you see if it is playing, we say, so if it's true, we say that it should show the pause icon. And if it isn't playing, then we say we should show the play icon. So if I tap that, this means it's not playing no more. So it isn't playing no more. So cool, we're getting there. So we just go down here. And you can see here how when we interact with all the other ones, it updates it. And it's all tracked as well in memory. So it's pretty clean, pretty nice. So that's enough for this one with delegates and protocol. I highly recommend you watch this video again and get that concept nailed down because it's a very, very important design pattern that we have here in the iOS, in iOS and programming. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're actually going to in, in, integrate the AV audio player. So we're actually going to start playing some music with the MP3 files that we have and then wrap up the application. So the next video is going to be the last video and we'll go from there. So if you enjoyed this video, like, share, subscribe, and if that's all, deuces.